Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy, Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. In this one, we're gonna be replacing an old Nintendo DS Lite shell with a brand new one, metallic gray, in fact. It's gonna be a little bit more chilled, mostly me doing the work, a little bit of background music, and a bit of commentary. So I really, really hope you enjoy it, and uh, look at the cats, man. Hey, babies. Anyway, yeah, um, enjoy the video, and uh, if you do enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for, for more content. We do not start a video without putting on the gloves. Now we have some electrical tape that I'm going to be using later on in the video, followed by the trusty old Dayard toolkit. Not a massively needed item, but I've just picked these up for about £3. They are stainless steel ceramic tweezers. And this is just a metal prying tool. First, we have to unfortunately dismantle our old DS. This DS specifically holds a big value in my heart because it's the first one that I actually ever done some work to. And I do just want to mention guys that this is not a how-to guide. Please do not follow most of these instructions. It's just for you guys to see through a beginner's perspective how I get on trying to change the shell on the DS. The next one I do will most likely be a full commentary of exactly what I'm doing, but I just really wanted to concentrate on getting it right.
about to see in a second that the antenna wire is completely screwed. Now this is because I used tweezers on it previously to tuck it into some of the molds on the old DS. And as you can see, this is a consequence of that. So please, if you're gonna do this, just make sure you're careful. Now it's time to place all of our old components into the new DS shell. I picked this shell up for around six to seven pounds on eBay, so it wasn't too much, and it came with everything that I needed. And I mean, here you're about to see it's not painted on the inside, but does that really matter? Not so much. There was an area on the outside of the case that had a little bit of paint missing, so that was a little bit annoying. But what do you expect for six, seven pounds? When removing the top LCD screen, I decided to put some more adhesive, AKA double-sided sticky tape. Again, I'm not too sure if that was a great thing to do, but this was just to make sure that the screen was sticking to the top of the shell. It was at this exact moment I realized we were supposed to tie the ribbon cable through the shell a lot earlier.
Oh, and at this point, I think this is the bottom LCD screen. I could be wrong, but if someone can help me out in the comments below, I think I put the wrong screen at the top of the DS, which then meant that I wasn't able to change the bottom one. Unfortunately, the way that I wrapped the antenna cable around the casing of the DS meant I didn't have enough room to plug it into the main motherboard. As a result of that, I simply stuck it under the DS card reader and left it there. After I put the DS back together, it was time to turn it on. However, the slider was caught on something. So I had to take the back of the DS off again and just make sure that it was correctly aligned. And lo and behold, the DS actually turns on. I don't know if you guys can see in the top left there, but you see the paint mark that I was talking about earlier. The sound does also work, it's just that this particular clip was muted. And going back to the bottom screen of the DS, it's it's horrific in terms of when I touch the screen, it, it, it does the complete opposite letters to what I want it to touch. And I think this is because I tried to replace the bottom LCD screen with the top one, like a moron, and when I took the knife to it, I damaged the digitizer. And yes, there was a lot of rattling, which was the antenna cable inside.
I mean, for its cosmetic value, it looks amazing. I really, really like the, me the metallic gray. I think, I think it stands out. I think it looks clean. It's just a shame about the bottom screen and the fact that if you push the buttons on the bottom screen, it doesn't work. And the fact that the antenna doesn't work. I will end up buying a new LCD screen for the bottom as well as a digitizer, just to give it that finishing touch, as well as going back and just ensuring that the antenna is fully attached. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Peace.